Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Food for Thought. As most of you know, this program is hosted by Dr. Mirza Mohyuddin Saib, but Dr. Saab also hosts a doctorate degree in food sciences. My name is Mubashar Ahmed, and I will be hosting this program today, and we will be having Dr. Mirza Saib as a guest in our program. Dr. Saab, welcome to your own program today as a guest. Thank you very much. This uh, looks quite odd, but uh, it's fun to see that uh, I'm the guest today on, uh, and you are the host. Thank you. Um, we, I understand we are standing in front of a greenhouse today. So uh, what, um, what would you like to tell our viewers about the greenhouse, why we are here, and what do we see in our background? The idea of this whole program is that greenhouses are protected cultivation is very important all over the world, especially when we're living in a cold climate. Mm -hmm. In Alberta, Canada, and of course all over Canada is a cold climate. So a lot of farming is done, a lot of different products are grown under plastic or glass greenhouses. So when we talk about a greenhouse and we like to show our viewers as well will take them inside the greenhouse and show them what a greenhouse looks like. Right now what you see here in our background is a greenhouse which is made of plastic and of course on the right hand side if we see there is a water pond as well. So most of the time water is the first important thing. Water availability for greenhouse use is very essential. Okay, so greenhouse doesn't actually mean that it's actually green. So why is it called greenhouse? I mean, I don't see any, I see green inside, but right. there's nothing green outside. <laughs> well, that's a standard term which we have been adopted, that because we grow green plant material inside, and I know in Europe they use glass houses term, and then growth houses as well. So greenhouse is more commonly used term, where, because a lot of green plants are grown here. So these greenhouses are actually built here as as an industry. Is it uh, is it on commercial basis, or people are building these and maintaining them uh, just because they want to? This is a this is an industry. Uh, this in Canada, for example, greenhouse industry is more than two point five billion dollars, where different type of plant material is grown for outside use and for vegetable production as well. And mind you, people could use as a hobby as well. The idea of this program is that we want to give them the information on how to, how to have a small greenhouse. All of these greenhouses, which are big one, commercial one, started very small actually, as a hobby greenhouse to begin with. Okay. So what you're telling, what I understand is, um, these are commercial ones, but people can do this thing at home or in their land if they have some free land available. So do they need really some special equipment to start these or, or really these are to be built at home also? What's the idea behind that? It's very simple to build a greenhouse. All you need is a protected environment. So you don't need any special equipment. All you need is a plastic and some structure. You could build a frame out of wood as well. And later on we'll show what, what is involved in there. And of course, if it's a cold climate, you need some heating system. You need a little bit of ventilation as well. And of course, inside is totally different story. To grow plants, you need a growing media. You need watering system, the seed and everything. And that's what we'd like to give. Uh, our viewers. So one might think that you know with all this um, stuff that is needed with the greenhouse is it not cheaper just to buy the vegetables from the market or, or is there any other benefit behind it like you get the pure vegetables without uh, fertilizers and stuff or, or is there any other benefit too? I think it just is a philosophical question but it is more locally grown food supply we want to assure that you have food supply of your own rather than buying from other areas. Sometimes if there's a storm, you can't bring vegetables as well. Recently, for example, there has been big frost in Florida and Mexico, yeah, yeah. and suddenly yeah, you can't see that. tomatoes and supply. So it's a question of growing your own food and of course supplying to the other semi-commercial, commercial, different aspects are there. But growing your own food is also enjoyable as well, is a learning tool as well, is a knowledge as well. So it's not just buying food and eating it. Thank you very much, Dr. Sub. So I think you will show us inside uh, what other Absolutely. things there are. Let's, let's go inside. All right, let's go. Uh, stay with us and uh, watch this program. So you will be able to learn a lot about what the greenhouses are, how they are built, and uh, what our equipment do you need in there. So we'll be uh, able to show all of that to you. So Dr. Sub, we were about to enter this greenhouse um, to see the plants and stuff, and we saw that a lot of flowers and some of the plants are sitting here. Right. 
it's quite cold here. Is it not dangerous for these plants? Yeah, uh, these plants are very hardy. They will take a good frost up to minus three, minus four degrees Celsius. You notice here we call them pansies and petunias and different type of colors are there. So basically they could be moved outside and they provide an advantage to the grower that space in the greenhouse could be given to other plants and these are moved outside. Okay, that's uh, that's good to know. Um, so when they're selling these plants, uh, how, how do they count them? Like, you know, I see that they're in some packs or something. Can, right. can you show us some uh, plant? How can you take it out? Or Right. Yeah, this is called a six-pack. See, they're grown in container. Right. These are biodegradable plastic, oh, okay. environmentally quite friendly. Mm. So this is a pack. One. Okay two, three, four, six pack. Okay. And notice the price there, six pack, uh, annual. It's about four dollars. Four dollars, so this is an right. annual. Every year you have to plant it. But I'd like to show you, see, let me pull this out. Look at this one. Look at the root. Uh, so root. they're all like kind of packaged. Yeah, exactly, yeah. This is this is a root right here. Okay. So one, one other thing that if you want to plant it in your garden, you always make sure these roots are teased a little bit so you so that uh, roots can otherwise roots just keep on going oh, they like keep the, going in a circle exactly so whenever you plant them in a container you have to just tease them up a little bit see so that uh, yeah th this is a, a beautiful plant nice developed roots good foliage good flower so this is a one plant in a six pack that's good, that's good. Uh, anything else you'd like to show us here? Arthab, I see there are so many different colors. These flowers look the same, but the colors are different. Are they probably genetically modified or they're just different species or, or they're just different plants? Yeah, a lot of breeding, normal breeding work has been done because human beings uh, love different colors. Right. After some time, you get bored. So th that's why scientists have been constantly coming with new flowers. And if you look at closely at these flowers here, it's just amazing, you know. You look at these flowers, it gives you an image of a, there's a nose here, there's a mustache here. So children really love these things. You see these, uh, these uh, color and color flowers on them. And they, they keep on coming. So they will give you good color up to late August in a cold climate. If it's a good climate, it will keep on flowering for a long period of time. Okay. You mentioned the word annual. Uh, wh what does that mean? Annual mean that they will only go for one year. They are not perennial. Perennial is the one which uh, lasts every year. You plant them once and they keep on coming, they keep on multiplying. So that means with annuals you have to invest the money uh, into uh, putting the plants every year. Every year, exactly. That, that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you just heard the difference between annual and perennial. So uh, just make sure that you know about it when you buy the plants so that you know that your plants are going to be good for next year or not. So you can plan your garden accordingly. So we'll go inside the greenhouse now and look at more plants and, uh, and learn more about the equipment and stuff in there. So now we are inside a greenhouse and there's a huge environmental or temperature difference between outside and inside. So we'll talk to Darsab and uh, ask him uh, to tell us why they have to keep this place so warm and, uh, and how do they do it? Well, there's a heating system in the greenhouse. The temperature has to be kept uh, at a certain minimum and maximum. Plants are very interesting. They respond to day and night temperature. Mm -hmm. So night temperature is a little bit cooler than the day. So, so they have to change the temperature day and night? Right. There's, a, so there's a computer which, uh, which reacts to that. So in this case, for example, when I, when I look at this plant here, that's a typical, we call it a geranium plant. Look at the beautiful, this is a new variety with a rose color on them. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at this plant here, uh, they, they are, that 24 hour temperature determines the growth of the plant. So cooler nights, slightly warmer day will stretch the plant. Really? Yeah. So That's very interesting to know. Exactly. So the, the, each plant has to be, it has got its own world, like other human beings. So notice here, one plant is flowering, other is not flowering, it's taking a little bit longer time. So it's a very interesting process inside the plants. So, so people take these plants out and they could be planted in a bigger container and then they keep on flowering until the frost time. So this is a geranium, we call it, a very popular color on this one. 
Rasta I see that uh, they are they are they are written here. It's a 4.5 inch part. Right. Yeah. And I see some parts are bigger, some parts are smaller, some are hanging here. Right. Why we are using so many different type of parts? Like, does the plant have some sort of uh, sense that in what kind of plant it is and how big it can be and how small it can be? Does it sense something? Yes. Uh, in these hanging baskets are of course bigger plants. People want as a decoration in their backyards, so they hang. So what happened is the plants which are used for hanging baskets, we call them trailing petunias, for example. So they will come and then they will start growing downward. Downwards, so okay. th that has been a special plant which has been bred that way. Oh, okay. This can all and very interesting. I don't you notice or not that uh, this is it's a very attractive fiber. It's like a woven. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's more like a plant fiber type material here. Okay. But look at this one here, you know, this is uh, another type here as well. So more organic material is used so that they could decompose uh, as well. But look at the variety, I think what, that's what people like. How about uh, these baskets over here? Right. They are, they're also that composable? No, no? The, the, but the people recycle them. People yeah, recycle exactly. them. Exactly, okay. that's a bigger part there. Exactly. But different plants. Uh, these are of course single plants, but then three, four different type of plants could be added for different colors. So each pot could have four or five different colors in them. And you told me that uh, different plants respond differently to the temperatures. Right, yeah. So that means in one kind of greenhouse they can only keep one kind of plants or or they partition the greenhouses for that purpose or they keep different greenhouses for different plants. Yeah, you notice that there's no partition. So there is, most of the plants are very comfortable in a certain range. Okay. The plants we saw outside, they could take much cooler temperatures so they have been moved outside much quicker. Okay. If they have stayed inside here, they will stretch pretty quickly. So most of the plants which you see in a greenhouse fit in that same, same range. I say 17, 18 degrees centigrade night, 22, 23 daytime. That's ideal for flowering as well and then the amount of light. So in May, June they start flowering pretty good. Okay. It's uh, quite interesting that I see there are some fans over here. There are some fans sitting over there. Are we saying that plants feel hard and core like we do or they need you know, air conditioning or, or fans or, or, or what, what is the role of these fans here? Well, uh, to maintain a proper temperature, remember that we have a covered structure now. Right. When we can't insulate it too much, light has to come in. Right. So once the light comes in, it heats the air as well. Right. So we need the fans to exhaust the warm air to maintain a proper temperature. So you could use a thermostat or a computer to program it that this is the temperature. There's a set point on a thermostat. For this greenhouse, the vent, the fans start opening when the temperature hits, let's say, 22 degrees centigrade. Okay. And then it starts heating if the temperature drops below 18 degrees centigrade. And as I mentioned, plants work on a 24-hour average temperature. Night time is their so-called rest period. Like us, they like to rest. Then many at that time, they use up all the food energy they have made to grow at night time. Daytime, they are using the sunlight to make the food and then we call photosynthesis and those sort of things. Well, it's very interesting to know that uh, plants need a full 24-hour cycle, including the light and the temperature and stuff also. I had no idea about these things. So stay with us and there will be a lot more interesting stuff coming up when Dr. Self shows us a lot more equipment and, and a few other things that are being used in these greenhouses. So we had learned that just like human beings, plants also go through a 24-hour cycle including the temperature difference and the light and the dark and all that kind of stuff. What we are just learning is that plants do need the doctors as well. I understand, Dr. Saf, that's where your role comes in. And you have a sick plant here which you are going to look after. Right. So tell us, what do you see in this plant and why do we need the doctor for plants? <laughs> see, what we were looking at this plant was, that's the same geranium so we were, we show you the flowering one. Yeah. When you notice that these leaves start showing these kind of symptoms, I call them speckling, and then they start dying off on the edges. What happen is, if the acidity in this growing media become too acidic, due to some reason, it's quite interesting, the, this plant itself make the growing media more acidic by producing more acidity. Exactly like human being, when we eat some wrong food, 
especially too much curried food or too much yeah, meat. Yeah. There's acidity in us. So too much acidity in the root zone causes the uptake of iron several times more. And then the iron is got rid on the edges. Is there something similar to like iron overload in our bodies exactly. that we call it? Absolutely, absolutely. A uh, human body, what it does is it get rid of most of things on the skin. Right. So those rashes when yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. Same thing is a skin rash on this geranium plant and is because of the acidity we it has caused. And you know, interested, the cure is the same as in human beings, that we are going to give it a sodium bicarbonate solution to change the acidity of this uh, plant. So, so you, we will put that solution in that soil over here exactly. and the soil will uh, basically take it in and then the plant will get it from the soil exactly, exactly. and slowly release its extra iron and stuff. Exactly. What happened is this damage is done. Okay. This is not going to recover. So what we are going to do is basically this will be taken off but the new growth appears to be normal so we just want to maintain the new growth of the plant. So whenever you see a sick leaf on a plant, shall you just pluck it out or is it in this particular case or is it a general application? Well, whenever we see something, we like to diagnose it first and why this is happening. Okay. In this plant, the symptoms are like this. Other plants show different type of symptoms. So as a result of that, because once the damage is done, it's not going to recover. So okay. the, the best practice is let the plant recover and then these are taken off before selling them. All right, so you saw that uh, a doctor plays an important role in our lives and as well as in the life of a plant. So it's very important uh, to take care of the plants and to keep an eye on their growth and on all these different kind of symbols. In this province, we are very fortunate to have the system where if you have a problem, you can actually go out and get the information about it and you can actually diagnose it and uh, get help about it. Now we're seeing a lot of different kind of plants here with a lot of different colors of leaves and uh, flowers and all that kind of stuff. So we will ask ourselves to give us a brief introduction of these plants and tell us what they are and what kind of environment do we need to grow them. So Darsa, why don't we uh, go through this and you keep telling us all about these plants here. Right, what you see here is the, what we call them begonias. They are, they are beautiful flowers, lot of good foliage and then for example here, this is more leafy begonia, we call it. This will produce flower, but a little bit later, for later in the season. So these plants are programmed to flower at a different time of the year, so that your colors could be enhanced. Whatever is coloring here, for example, you see those uh, hanging baskets of begonias, they are already in flower. Right. People pick the plants which are flowering already. But these are the one which could be, cl they climb as well. They will, you could put in your house and they'll keep on climbing. Inside the house, they will stay as a perennial for a long period of time. So after that, you will notice that uh, different color begonias are here too. Now this is a different color. Well, slight smell them as well, but again, um, these are the begonias with a lot of good flowers are coming on them. So th this is a basically is the begonia bench what we are seeing here. Multicolor, single color, hanging baskets and potted plants here. Okay. So uh, all of these plants will have different color of flowers or uh, it, it depends? Like they, yeah, they, they this, could be different species? This, this group uh, what we are seeing here is the uh, same flowers but look at this one here. There's a different color coming up here and then look at that color there. That's a uh, that's different a there's a yellow one there and then uh, here is an interesting begonia which which would not flower at this time but it's, it's known for its leaf so mm. the the it's color a very interesting leaf is exactly. going uh, round and and exactly. has different shades yeah. in it exactly yeah. there is a leaf but looks like a flower is there see so this is other type let me ask you another question here when i touch these leaves i have different feeling and they are much more flat and right. I, this one is more like a velvet kind of thing exactly yeah is there a different benefit for the plant to have this kind of uh, leaf like do they uh, attract more water or something or, or what is it this is in nature a mechanism to avoid insect any insect which will land here will get stuck into these uh, 
these uh, spines, small spines. So nature is beautiful that this is where they, they will come here. They, they get attracted to the shiny color, but they will get stuck here and fly away. So least susceptible to the insect. This is quite, nice. uh, quite interesting. That's yeah. very interesting, very interesting. And then, so, so all of these plants that we are seeing here, they're all begonias. Yeah, this from here all is all begonias okay. family here. Okay, so what are these? These are very um, nice uh, maroon and black shade in the leaves. Yeah, this is also type of call we call Rex begonias. So same family. Flowers will come a little later, but small flowers, very small flowers uh, come on these one. So lots of these uh, leaves are in a little bit different color. We have been hearing about, uh, you know, chlorophyll and sunlight and synthesis and stuff like that. And I don't see green color in them. So do these plant produce the food the same way as others? Exactly. Yeah. The, the, the chlorophyll is one type of pigment in which the photosynthesis takes place. Photosynthesis basically taking the sunlight energy and fixing it. Plants are big factory to manufacture food. By fixing the sun energy, carbon dioxide, water and nutrients, it's a very integrated process. So any color like this, they are still able to do the photosynthesis. And that's why they are surviving. Otherwise, they'll be dead by now. Now I'm in a different kind of greenhouse. There's a lot of water flowing here and I'm honestly a little bit confused here. So we're going to ask Dr. Mizal Saab to give us more information about this particular greenhouse, what is being grown and uh, why there is so much water here. So Dr. Saab, as you told us earlier that we need a media to grow the plants, I'm totally confused in this <laughs> greenhouse because I'm not seeing any media. I'm seeing these plants are being grown on a on a sheet kind of thing. So tell us more about it, what it is and uh, how does uh, this technique work? Well, this is a system of growing where we don't need any soil or any other growing media. This is called hydroponics. H-Y-D-R-O-ponics. Literally meaning water at works. If you look at this one here, right in front of us, uh, this is where some uh, lattice mix is being grown. And look at the, here, this is how the plant was grown. Let me pull this out for you, that uh, this is how the seedling was grown. So a little bit of growing media is here. This is called rock wool. Okay. It's a special type of organic media wool. So the seedling is grown here. It's a multicolor salad, different colors. And then the roots are coming out of here. So, so you, you still need something to hold the seed exactly. from where it will grow, exactly. Exactly. but you do not need the traditional soil and absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. So isn't this method more clean? Like, can you use it for any kind of plants or it is certain kind of plants that you can use it for? At this time, it has been used for everything, including uh, potatoes and other root vegetable as well. Actually, mm. in the NASA program, the space program, where dirt is difficult to carry, this system is used to grow hydroponic uh, potatoes, hydroponic other vegetables. So practically anything can be grown as long as you know that what nutrients are required in the growth of this plant. So what you're telling me is very soon we'll be growing vegetables in space? Oh yeah, they, they, are, they are being grown uh, experimentally under uh, different gravity situation and it has been experimented with this. This is the basic system. So what I'd like to show is that once it has been planted here, the roots start coming out and the roots stay in this water. I see this water doesn't seem to be clean. Yeah, the water is, water is clean but it's colored. It's colored. The water okay. is absolutely clean. But okay. that color is due to the iron. The interesting thing is, which I want to point out for our viewer, is that uh, plants need nutrients like human beings. Okay. Same nutrients in our blood test which, are, which the plants need. They are nitrogen, phosphorus, potash, calcium, magnesium. When you take a blood test, same things are there. Everything is mixed here. So this is a complete nutrient which has got all what plants need to grow. The color you see here is the one which is a special type of iron. See, iron is red in color. Right. So this is an iron chelate which plants readily absorb. That's what you see. So the other interesting thing is that this water goes down into a tank. That's what I was going to ask you because it looks like it is flowing. I can hear the water flowing continuously. Why is it so? If they just need water, why can't we just leave the water in and, you know, they can continue using it? Yeah, then it's stagnant water, the oxygen goes down okay. and that affects the growth of the plant. So oxygen is required to 
purify and to uh, produce the essential nutrients in the water as well. Our oxygen is needed for root growth. Right. So root needs oxygen to grow. If there's no oxygen, the root will die off. A little bit more on this peppermint because they have been here longer time. Okay. The root system is so fantastic here. Uh, Maybe we should show it on the other yes. side. There we saw some roots which are... Uh, they were quite small. Quite small, you see. But look at the roots here. Oh my God. Yeah. So this, this is so the roots keep growing, exactly. and you keep harvesting the plant from exactly. top. So that's exactly. how you have the year-round supply of absolutely. the fresh absolutely. herbs. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that's exactly. This is a special type of peppermint. So look at this was planted probably three months ago in winter. You still keep on harvesting new growth on them, and roots keep on multiplying right here. See. Basil is grown in this greenhouse. This greenhouse looks very similar to the one we just saw earlier but it's slightly hotter in here and I do see some different things in this. So let's ask Dr. Mirza Sahib to explain. Um, it looks very similar. So right. what's the difference, number one? And number two, I see these yellow tapes and big light bulbs and stuff. So what, what, and, and a lot of fans. What is their role? Explain to our viewers, please. Yeah. See, this greenhouse is a more commercial production of a herb called basil. Okay. Basil is used for both for fresh garnish, in pasta making, so it's a very popular herb. So in this greenhouse, everything is grown in hydroponics. You see all those small seedlings. And of course, we did uh, show before that how the roots come out right here. Yep. And the, all the growing media is recycled. But what's different here is that uh, those yellow sticky traps, we call them, they're very sticky. It's basically the yellow plastic okay. with the sticky glue on that. So all the insects which might come to attack the plant get attracted to that. So I see a difference here, Dr. Sub. We have these yellow tapes here to attract right. the bugs and stuff. Right. We don't have any fans here. We have a lot of fans, especially in these big ones here. Right. We have a lot of fans, but we don't have any yellow tapes. Oh, well, is there any connection? No. They, once the plants get matured, they are ready for harvest. So they are mostly focused on the young plants. The insect love to come on young plants first, so they will be harvested within a week or so. And the fans mostly because at this time you don't need much air movement because plants are smaller. Once the plants get bigger, then the air movement inside is very important. And that's why you notice how plants are moving a little bit. Yeah. As a result of that, one other advantage of moving them is the stem gets thicker when the air touches them. So very interesting point how plants react to wind. So right. what these fans do is that they are moving a lot of air. So some of the diseases which come with high humidity, less air movement, they could be avoided. So you don't have to use the chemicals. In, uh, in winter, for example, starting September to March, our natural light is very low. So these are what we call uh, artificial lights. Okay. High pressure sodium lamps, we call them they provide light for the growth. Right now they are turned off, but they will be turned on on very cloudy days and also in winter so that the production is continuous for marketing purposes. So it goes back to the point you explained to our viewers earlier where in 24 hours you have to have certain light period and a certain rest period Absolutely. for yeah. the plants. Absolutely. In this case what we want, because it is all leafy material, so we, we like to light them for about 18 hours and then dark period we give them for another uh, 18, 24 hours. So the rest is the dark period for them. And that's the time is rest period is needed for these plants. So when we are talking about starting this on a commercial base, would you like to tell our viewers if there's any restriction or you need certain permissions from the government? Because of course, you're going to be using a lot of light, a lot of electricity. Um, I think the neighbors are also interested in knowing what you're doing, whether you're growing some herbs or you're growing marijuana or what. So uh, tell us, our viewers, uh, what are those kind of requirements? The naturally, first is that you need a plan what you want to grow. Then wherever you are living, uh, if there's a municipality, you need a buy, there's a license, building permits are needed. If you're, you're going to use power, then you need to talk to the power company how much power I need. So it's a comprehensive thing. It's just not that you grow, you want to grow and market it. Although these models could be, if you want to grow just a small amount to supplement your income, that's also a possibility. You don't need to invest large amount of money. 
and that's where a basic plan what you want to do you want to grow different herbs in your area like mint is so popular herb it yeah. could be grown easily in the greenhouse is free of any chemicals and any insects as well so i think those sort of things must be kept in mind that a good plan and then uh, you go to the city or the town or municipality where building permit is needed so build according to your needs and according to the rules and regulation of your country so in this program we have been able to show you the greenhouse and all the related techniques and technologies used in the greenhouse hopefully we have provided you enough information that you are able to start your own greenhouse at least on a smaller scale if you need any more information about anything that you have seen in this program you are welcome to contact us and we'll be more than happy to provide you all that information i'm your host mubashir ahmed for food for thought program assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh